Hello and welcome to my little arty corner here on YouTube. I'm Angela, Angela Porter, and it's very lovely to have you join me as I create. Today's going to be a change, perhaps a little bit different, so I'm not working in the accordion journal. I'll explain what these are in a moment. First, let me say thank you so much for the lovely comments, the likes, the subscribes for my recent videos. And I've had a very busy Peeply week and it hasn't finished because this afternoon I have to I have a second funeral to go to this week. So I thought I'd do a video trying to keep myself calm, calm myself down a bit. Um because um one possible source of all the anxiety and stress was ruled out yesterday, thank goodness. That's all been put right. All I have to do is remember some things, which can be hard when I go from actually I'm quite calm and content to existential dread and horror. Sounds dramatic, but it probably is that bad. It happens. Um, anyway, I'm okay. I'm feel I'm feeling better, and um, yeah, I just need some time to recover. But art helps. Art really helps. So this morning I saw a video, and I can't remember the name of the woman who did it, but I will leave a link to her video below. Um, actually, I most probably could tell you because I'll have a look on. YouTubers, I'm chatting to you. And she's an abstract artist, does mixed media work. And I really enjoyed what she did and thought, now that would make a fantastic kind of grid or a way to work that is a little bit different to... Um... Right, okay, come on then, where are we? There we... Was it that one? No, it's that one. There we are. Um, Ellen Cremini, Trent artist. But I say I will put a link. Oh, gosh. There we go. As I go, excuse me. There we go. I clicked on the video, so I've got it there for afterwards. Oh, I'm having a day already. And I thought what she did was a lovely idea. And I thought it'd be quite nice to explore this as a different way of setting up pages for adding patterns and so on. So things do look a bit of a mess at the moment. This, these two were originally one. I just cut them in half because I know that if I start to draw on big pieces of paper, I drift off screen rapidly. Um, I drew the pen, pencil lines or the black lines in with a, I used, not that one, this one, which is from De La Rowney. And it is a, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze now. <coughs> oh dear. Um, a black drawing <coughs> pencil, artist sketching black drawing pencil. This is, the artist sketching is a, a tin full of different kinds of pencils for sketching from De La Rowney. I don't know if they're still available. Mine are quite old. But um, this, I f it feels like it's got charcoal in it or something that's very similar to charcoal. So very sketchy dense black thick lines which move with the watercolour because I used watercolour just to fill the spaces in and I've tried to go for earthyish colours and you can see that some of them like this one here I've got some unexpected effects and um, because I'm not using watercolour paper it's just mixed media paper because I'm not a watercolour artist really I use watercolours just to add colour but they vex me but I like how they interact unexpectedly in this kind of way and here where things have bled in I'm fine with that because it will oops as I'm off like here and places like here and here where they've bled and spread and things because if I'm going to fill these sections in with patterns of some kind or motifs they're going to disappear um, I then thought oh I'll try water soluble graphite and this is the one I used again it's from the artist sketching kit by De La Rowney this one's a soft one, 8B, so it's quite dark. Not as dark as the charcoal. Charcoal's really black. This is very dark grey. Because it's water soluble, as the brush goes along it, it moves graphite and picks some of the graphite up and darkens the edges or makes them a bit murkier and a bit grungier. So I've got these two here, which were one, like so. But I cut them into two. Again, Trying to go with earthier colours because I thought they would um, 
same kind of thing happening. Some deliberately where I've dropped. I don't know how that happened, but it did. And I'm happy with that. Um, let's say the water soluble graphite, not as dark as the the first one, the, the black sketching, the charcoal -y pencil, but um, still interesting. Still not very good with um, density of colour. This one, I did cut these down in half and I used um, an ink tense pencil and it's um, Derwent and I used charcoal grey. You can see, I'll move it round, there we go. Not black because I wasn't going to spend 10 minutes sorting through my big pot of ink tense pencils hoping I could find the black quickly. Now I'd just probably put my hand in and I go, oh there we are, black straight in my hand. But the grey is okay, it works and again it as, you, as the brush touches it, it activates the ink tents, which then mixes with the watercolour. But once dry, the ink tents is permanent, so I'm not going to smudge it with my hand or if I decide to put any more watercolour on, which I'm not going to. And this last one, which I haven't finished, and I'm not sure whether I will, I use this, which is, these are found in the, in the ink tent sets. They're outliner pencils. And they are a pencil that isn't affected by water. So you can draw lines with them and they remain there. It's not, they're not very dark, but you know, they're dark enough. So to draw these patterns, um, two ticks, let me get my piece of paper. Let's have my drawing, my um, cutting board underneath really needs a darn good clean. It needs a good scrub. So if I take this charcoal pencil, I'm just going to draw lines on, pretty much at random. I can curve them, I can draw different shapes, like I can put a triangle in. And you just split this up into sections as you want to something that is pleasing to you. I do like sections like this. See, I'm still getting my little narrow borders in here. And then sometimes perhaps I'll go like this, because I do like a curve. And how about if we have one going perhaps here, just to there. It always feels odd when I do that. I feel like it should carry on, but I could have it carrying on because I could draw under and have it coming out the other side, which is quite fun. This is a big section up here, so I think I might just cut this down into smaller sections, perhaps. Like so. And then, because I'm not very good with watercolour, really not. My brush skills are far better with pens. So I've now got this. So all I need is, I've got some water there. I've got some watercolours here. I've got Paul Rubens and they're translucent watercolours. They're artist quality, professional artist quality apparently. They work as much as I need them to, and I'm going to get, I'm going to find, where have I put my brush? I was just using a great big brush. There, right in front of me. And I'm going to use colour that is quite, quite saturated, I think. And I'm just going to fill in the sections with colour in a way that's pleasing to me. You can see that as I touch the brush to the graphite, to the graphite to the charcoal it picks it up and just dirties the paint a little bit or you know I can deliberately pick a bit more of it up and brush it in but I'm quite happy with that because I like the unexpected nature of it. That one might actually dry quite nice. It's a nice green. I made it by mixing greens and blues. Never be able to replicate it no doubt. Perhaps this one. I'm not too worried if I can't make it again because, well, 
I'll come up with the right the right kind of colour. And I'm not brilliant at um, watercolouring my brush. I've got a lovely point on this brush and I still manage to go outside the lines. I'm using quite a large brush. This is um, a size 8. And it's it's got a round, it's round with a tip. I'm not sure what the names are. But it all works. And I could just keep going with this. Big section there. You see the graphite being picked up just along the edge here and I pulled it in that little bit. Now I may have touched this to the green so I might get some bleeding one way or the other but I'm not worried. I want to add another colour to this. So I'm going to add some yellow ochre here. Because I rather like, I love yellow ochre, I love indigo, though there's not a proper indigo in this set. So I'm mixing a dark blue with Payne's grey to get a more indigo colour. I love this. And a little bit of work, I can re-wet the edge here. And I will just get some of this mixing. I'm going to have a very uneven patch of colour here when it dries. But again, I'm not too worried. Because I'm not doing, I'm not using watercolour for watercolour purposes. I'm using it just to put a background colour on. And so I would just continue with this, just like I am here. Just dotting some colour, extra colour in here. See. On the edges, just mixing it so I get some interesting effects, which I didn't do on the other ones, actually. It'd be interesting to see how that actually dries. So it's not watercolour paper, but it may actually work quite nicely. Well, I can hope. So if I just do the last one here. Eventually I'll fill this all in with colour. This is Payne's Grey mixed with a sort of... Um, oh, it's a beautiful blue. It's sort of like... It's, it's a greenish blue, but it's not quite turquoise. I'm not sure what the, colour, what the name of the colour is. I particularly like it, I do have to say, the green, and this um, this is just Payne's Grey, which oddly Payne's Grey is a kind of blue. But they do vary from watercolour set to watercolour set. Now, I'm using these, but you can use, this is something you fancy doing, you could use any medium at all you would like to use. There are no rules or prerequisites for this, so I am going to chop some purple into that and just let it do what it wishes. I love how watercolour blossoms and blooms in the wet. And I'm then going to just pop my watercolours to one side, my brush and my water, before I throw it over everywhere. I've already got a mug of tea or half of my morning mug of tea in front of me. And I'll put that to one side and I'll show you it at the end of the video once it's dried. Okay. Ooh if it doesn't end up on the floor. And I just put my finger in, the one with purple in. Oh well, hey ho, it's be fine. Okay, let me pick one of these. I think I'll do that one. Well, this paper does warp when it's wet, but just a bit of manipulation, taking care not to rub the charcoal, because the charcoal will move. And sensibly, I really ought to have some kind of tissue or other under my hand. There we go. So that I don't smudge it. And I'm going to use a nice chunky. I've got a black 05 Pigma Micron from Sakura. So it's got a nice, nice strong nib. And I'm just going to start to fill these sections in with some pattern and we'll see what happens. So what I'm doing, what I started with was this line here and I did one, two and on the third one I made a V shape. One, two, this is my third one, so I need to make that V shape. 
I'll fill those in. So one, two, V. One, two, V. One, two, V. And then one, two. Goes right up to the charcoal line, but it just fills that section in with pattern there. And I really quite like that. I think what I'm going to do here, though, in this section, I'm going to outline as close as I can get to the charcoal. There might be a little gap, but you know, I'm fine with that as well. And yes, I'm aware I could have drawn these lines in pen, but I really wanted to see what would happen if I use the charcoal and see what happens. A part of me is regretting putting this line in, but I wouldn't know unless I tried. This is all an experiment. I haven't done this before, particularly. Um, though I do think I explored the work of people like Paul Klee when I was doing my A-level art over about 20 years ago now. But... Um, and, and abstract art, because I do like abstract art. Um, yeah, so in this one, I've got triangles here. So what I think I'll do is I'm going to fill this with some Tripoli, because that then will go with my pattern above. So I'm echoing and repeating patterns and shapes close to each other in some way. Now I'm going to use a black pen here, but I could equally use coloured pens that tone in with the background, and I may do that in some of these. Okay, so Tripoli, I start with a row of of triangles pointing upwards. Sort of, I can leave a similar gap between them, make the length of the base about the same. Fill them in then with these, and then the next row of triangles, I'm going to do the upward pointed ones by putting the base of these on top of the of these downward pointing ones, if that makes sense. You can see how I do it. It's easier to show than it is to explain. But I find this the easiest way to get a this kind of Tripoli pattern that um, I feel is good enough. I know how they do it at Zentangle and they start with um, one triangle, say this one, and then you draw a line here, the next triangle and work round. I find it very difficult to keep track of the pattern that way. If I was drawing hexagons, no problem. No problem with a hexagon grid. Draw, learning to draw hexagons was a stocking trade for me when I was, um, well, all the time I studied chemistry and had organic chemistry as part of it, hydrocarbons and things like that, benzene. And all the other lot, anthracene and graphite, all based on, yep, graphite. The molecular structure of graphite is a grid of hexagons. Without gaps in between on triangles like this, but more like a honeycomb. It's true. So you learn to draw uh, molecules like that in organic chemistry, which is one of the subjects I took for my degree or specialised in in my final year. The other one was environmental pollution science. So perhaps this is why, well, it's not perhaps, this is one reason I love pattern and I love observation and pulling out the um, intricate parts of um, different things. But... Um, and stylized drawings, you know, where you focus on, well, this is the shape. We don't have to draw it artistically or accurately, 
but it's an observational drawing to bring out f the important features of, say, a flower, which may not be apparent in a photograph. So it's a different way of recording information. It's not something I, I do very much now, but it works. And already, even though the line, go back to this, even though the, the charcoal lines are a bit messy and blurry, by putting these patterns in here, suddenly things change that little bit, don't they? I think they do. And for the better in many ways. Okay, let me just get my, I've got here my, um, I've got that one. These pens I particularly like drawing with. I don't use them often, I've had them for years. Um, they're Zig Writers and this one is Steel Grey. They, I think they're still available, uh, not easily in the UK, but they've got two ends. You've got a 0.5mm tip and a 1.2mm tip. It's the 0.5 I'm going to use. I've got the other set which has... Um, different nibs on. And one of them's got little channels in it so it sort of like draws I think it's either two or three lines. Um, okay so what I'm going to do in this one here is I am going to draw triply here but using a colour that is a little bit darker than the background itself close in on this. I know I did triply in my last video if you saw that one and I'm making no apologies for repeating myself here. It started with this one which is triangles and my next thought was well let's repeat that triangle and that was the first pattern that came to my mind here. So Now, whether I get all of this finished is a different matter today, but we shall see, shan't we? My lines aren't exactly level. The triangles aren't all exactly staying the same size and distance apart. But these minor imperfections, I say minor, these imperfections are what makes this pattern have um, movement and interest and it looks like the, this surface underneath has been a bit worn and warped in some way in comparison to this one which is more regular and again I'm fine with both in fact I'm enjoying doing one that's a bit more wibbly wobbly Sometimes it's really good to let go of perfection. Give yourself permission to just let it happen as it does. Because perfection is paralysing or the desire for it. It's often why I have trouble getting work done is because I become um, paralysed by the fear of what I do not being good enough or not being what I thought it would be. or Especially if I'm doing work for um, a company, you know, like the the ones I do the colouring books for. Really, um, vexes me then. There we go. So that actually swoops nicely underneath. And I could go back, and I may very well go back and add some shade there, which would be quite fun. I haven't got any more blue lurking around here, but I'm gonna have a look and see what brown, oh, I've got a nice brown here, yes I have. Excuse the rattling of the pens, but you know, it's their case. So another one of the Zig Writer, this one is pure brown, which I think may work quite nicely in some of these sections. I'm trying to keep some tissue under my hands so I don't get stuff smeared everywhere. I think here I might do suppose a version of tipple, except I'm not using little circles, I'm using little pebble shapes. And I'm going to try and keep them smaller towards the edge and get them getting bigger 
towards the centre where the biggest ones will be. And if it's not perfect that all the small ones are around the edge and all the big ones in the middle, that's fine. In fact, if anything, I should really go around the edge and add small ones in before I start doing any more. Because that will remind me that those are the littlest and then these need to get bigger right the way towards the centre then. By changing the size of the pattern as you go, it can give that illusion of um, volume. So the more ink you ha add, if it's like this, a dark ink, then the more in shadow those areas appear. And the ones where you've got the big open spaces, like, you know, the big ones in the middle, they appear lighter. And so you get that feeling that they're on the top and they're, they've been pulled out and stretched whereas the others have been squashed together. You know, as objects look smaller, the further away they are. So, you know, if you look at a tree close up to you in a similar tree on a hill, you know, a mile away, the tree farther away looks that much closer. It also looks, like it doesn't look darker generally. It depends how far away, but... It's that kind of idea is that I want these ones on the edge to look like they're further away, dipping down and the ones on top closer and looking bigger. Now whether that works, I'm not entirely sure. And then what I'll do, not on that one, I'll go to this one. I'm going to do the opposite where I'm going to make them all very big around the edge. And to leave the space in the middle, I'll come back to that. In this case, I'm going to do it like this. Sometimes this makes more sense than trying to fill it in as I go. I could have done the same kind of thing with the other one where I could have filled all around the outside with the small ones and then no. Um, so here I am just using nice big ones, so I've gone all the way round. And then I'm going to go around again, but with slightly smaller pebbles, just to fill the gaps in and beside them and around them and so on. They're quite a bit smaller, but it'll work. Some will be a bit bigger than others, and that's fine. As long as they're not bigger than the ones on the outside edge, we're okay. And some of them along here, I've just let them fall off the edge, or as if, you know, they carry on underneath here, which they could very well do. And then this last one, I'm going to start adding tiny ones, just to fill this whole space in. Not do, being very neat and tidy with this, because this isn't going to be anything that's particularly finished, polished, you know, suitable for putting on a card or framing or anything like that. It is purely experimental, trying things out. Then I'm more interested in seeing what the effect is, how things work out, than I am anything else. So that looks like this is falling away. I don't know if you can see the difference and adding shadow to this will really really help. Okay now I'm going to move on to another area where I've got some brownie colour. I've got some here and I think for this one I'm just going to put in is this doodle? I think it is. where I'm drawing the lines 
from the top and stopping short at the bottom and then a little bit away from the top line and going all the way to the bottom so I'm alternating them a bit like the teeth of a zip which I think why it's where it got its name from zippity doo da there so that looks quite good so I'm tying these colours in as well which is nice Okay, have I got another area I can use this brown on? Here, yes, and I'm going to do Paradox So Start on this edge. I'm creating a little triangle there Trying to keep that distance the same on each one, it's not crucial. I go from where I stop that line and I keep spiralling around, or going like this, and it creates a kind of spiral in the centre where we've always got a squarish shape. Now I know that people like to turn their paper, but I quite like, I, I just, I get seasick if I do that. So I've got this one here. And then perhaps what I'm going to do here, I'm going to cut this one in half and I'm going to do paradox here, but the triangular version of it. So started from the bottom up to the top, this line, I'm going to give myself a little gap there. Here, it needs to go out that way. Then flare it out there, here. And yet, depending which way I'm working from here, I could draw it this way, but I find it awkward to work in that direction. So I'm just thinking about there down and I'll draw back to that one. Works the same. And the lines are smaller, so I can keep going around now with some confidence without lifting my pen. And on this side, I'm going to start at the bottom. And I'm going to do paradox in a mirror form. So we'll end up with an interesting shape in the centre, a kind of fan shape, the appearance of something that's a bit like a ginkgo leaf. There we go, or an arrowhead. So there we are. So that makes that quite interesting. I think I'd get away with this colour here. I'm just going to fill this in with some perk, which works quite nicely. Okay, I'm going to go and dig and dive into my little box here again, find a different colour. There's that one, coffee. Oh, I don't want that one. How about... No. Yeah, let's try that one for some of the lighter areas. This one is it's Summer Sun. So let's have a look at that on this area here and maybe that one. So, oh, what can I do here? I think... Oh, this one is barely any different. It's a very bright yellow, but I can live with that. So what am I going to do? Oh, I'm going to do diva dance. <laughs> it's going to add a lot of brightness. I'm going to turn it the other way around to carry on now so that I can put my little lumps and bumps in, in the right kind of direction here. This will be barely noticeable in some ways. It'll be a lot brighter looking than other sections. But I can always do something about this. I can always tone this down a little bit if I want to, because I can always use some um, watercolour on the top here, or graphite, charcoal, chalk, pastel. And just tone this colour down a little bit if I think it's a bit too bright compared to the rest of the sections, but sometimes it's nice to have that little 
surprise. But until you try these things, you don't know what's going to happen. I certainly don't. And it may do that be that I like this the best out of all of them. Or that I hate it. But it's trying things out and I enjoy trying things out. Some days I enjoy trying things out. Other days we trial just to get going. But that really is quite bright and garish. But I quite, well, it's not so much on the screen, but it is here. Perhaps it's the brightness of my lights in my room. So I'm going to do something. I think I might do the same here. But I think... I could go this way or I could go that way. Let's do it this way. These are pigment markers, they are waterproof, it's pigment ink, and yet that green shows through so there is some translucency with them. So they will pick the colours up underneath which will help to tone this bright yellow down somewhat. And I'm picking up some of the charcoal on the tip as I draw into it, so that's helping as well. I think Diva Dance is possibly... Well, it's certainly in my top, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 patterns or motifs. There's just something about it. I don't know what it is. I think it's because it reminds me of patterns on things like nautiluses and, you know, sea creatures in general. So there we are, we've got that. Okie dokes, let's have a look. Back in the box I go. Okay. Okie okay, dokie. Okay. Uh, what colour do I want now? I want a greenish colour. I've got... I'll use this one. This is sagebrush and it's a greeny grey. I think I'd prefer something a bit more subdued again. So here... I think I may do splitting this up into four sections and I am going to put um, kind of chevrons in. Reminds me very much of Romanesque sculpture in old churches and abbeys and cathedrals here in the UK. Romanesque was brought over to the UK by the invading Normans in 1066. Yes, I know. <laughs> so, and I love it. There is something honest and beautiful and chunky and here to stay. Not because the Normans brought it over, but just I love the architectural style. And I love all the grotesques that you find on corbels outside. Grotesques are not the same as gargoyles. Gargoyles are drains for water. Grotesques are faces and creatures that are depicted on the corbels, which are the stones that hold the beams for the roof that project out um, underneath the roof on the outside of the church or building. And often they 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 are quite grotesque, and I think they were there to teach people about the perils of being evil or acting evilly. Actually, work quite nicely. I like that. There we go. This one, I think I'm going to do something quite simple in this little section. A bit in the centre. Then I'm going to draw across there, and then I'm going to. create almost like a diamond on either side as if we've got some you know something in there again shadow will help to bring this out this is such a tiny little section here but I am still going to fill it in and I'm going to fill it in with just some stripes like so because I think that will be just fine okay this one here I'm going to use this pen because it will look different on here and I'm going to do a 
uh, the patterns Senna, I think it is. So I'm starting from the same point of this S curve in the middle. I'm drawing lines out that are bending as they wish, and I am adding quite a bit of thickness to the end of these lines just to help them curve that little bit more. And once I've done this one, I'm going to do some shading. I won't finish everything. And I'm going to have to start to sort myself out soon to get ready to go to the funeral. It's not, I don't have to be there. I think it's half past three I need to be there. But, um... I need to travel in school home time, which means the roads are much busier and it's a Friday. Roads are always busier on a Friday for some reason. So I don't want to get stuck into traffic and be late. So I'm going to go quite early. I might take my camera with me, not to take photographs of the funeral. But afterwards, instead of coming straight home, is perhaps to go somewhere, even though it's grey and gloomy here quite nice. Okay, I'm going to start going around this one and so I'm going to start getting some weird stuff going on here and it's the weird stuff I like. Like this. Do one more from this point and then I'm going to move along to this here, and I'm going to have this one going around here, and I can get these just to connect in. Just realised I've left my heating and hot water on. When I came up to start doing some art and I meant to go and turn it, or meant to turn it off. Oh well, warm house, very warm house. So I keep forgetting to adjust the temperature, that is fine. So we've got that there which is really warping space. God, blimey, that's a good one. I'm impressed with that one. Must remember, do long S shapes, Angela, because they work out wonderfully in Senna and that was a really nice kind of space to get it to work. Excuse the rattles, okay. Right so I have choices as to how I um, add shadow to this and I think today I may actually use a Pitt artist pen or uh, Pitt graphite matte so a black one because this will tie in a bit with the charcoal. So for this section I'm putting the shadow around the edge and I will then blend it out a little bit. Part of me is going, Angela, you should have used chalk pastels because I could have used colour but we'll use this as it is and say it's going to be what it's going to be. And some of that charcoal, I'm blending that in as well, so it's less likely to move. The other thing I've got here, one of these General's chalk pastels. So I'm going to put some white at the top, use the other end of this. Oh, they're both grotty. The other one's purple. It'll be all right. And add a white highlight there just to help with where the light is, hopefully. Don't like the way it dulls the colour down, you see. But it'll be all right. So here I'm going to put a little bit of shadow around the edge because I've started doing that. But I'm going to put a lot of shadow in the centre here. So let's go back to this and let's just 
pull this out and have this going around here. I don't really want to get the graphite into the big ones around the edge, but I have got a little bit of graphite around the edge here, but that'll be fine. We'll be all right. And then I am going to, actually I could just put that highlight all the way around the center of these like so, lots of that graphite, and then gently just work it in, just to lighten it. I do think I might need, where's that? This is that charcoal, which is really black. Charcoal actually is quite matte and it's really black, this one. So I may actually make use of that elsewhere now. There we go. So that's given the two different versions. So if I get this, I get this around the edge again and just blend this one in. That'll darken that area and we'll get that instead of the grey to a degree, like so. So we've got some distinct, oh, that's not good there, that'll do. Some really good contrast, so that'll work. <laughs> okay, With these I'm going to put some contrast along the edges, like so. is very dark so I'm going to get quite a lot of dark I've also got squeakiness going on which is usual with gra um, charcoal I do have to warn you but as I work at it there we go, let me just pick some of the loose stuff up and again I think I may just put a highlight so towards the middle. It needs to be wider at this end because of the shape there. So I'm trying to mimic the shape of the space in the highlight. And then I can just lighten that bit, which helps with that contrast just a bit more. Actually, I really like this charcoal. Okay, let's go around this one. Now I put that black pen line in. Well, that's going to disappear, I'm afraid. But do you know what? That will make me happy because I'm not sure about that, particularly at the moment. So again, let's get this lot in. Mostly want it right, very dark at the edge, but I want to pull it in as I go. So I'll work it in on the edge and then smudge it out that little bit. We'll just pick up the loose graphite like that and we'll go back with this and just add some add the white chalk in. I'm going to just blend it in and just remove the extra. I'm going to have to put a bit more dark there because I went a bit far with the white but it'll be fine. So that's working. I will, that is working really well. I'm I'm impressed with this black thing. Okay, a couple more spaces. Let's have a look at this one, the diva dance. Just around the three edges. So I'll start with the graphite, not graphite, charcoal. And just blend it this way a little bit. Get that really in, really, really dark. And then perhaps just a bit of white in the centre here, just to lighten that. That tones that really bright yellow down. I think I do need to do something about this. This is 
quite a harsh edge so I'm going to try and move that darkness out a little bit and that actually works not badly. This here I'm just going to put I think a highlight down the middle and just leave it as that. This one I am going to put some charcoal around here but instead of being as heavy heavy handed as I was with the other one I'm going to just put a very light amount and just blend that out towards the middle and I can put some of the white there interestingly I can see how the white sticks to different parts of this more than others and that'll be nice buff that out. Okay for this one I'm going to decide which one is which side is going to catch light so this side is going to catch light not that one this one and then I will just buff that down and then the other end should have enough charcoal on for me just to put a hint of darkness there and that then gives me that illusion of um, stuff. Here I'm going to put some darkness in the middle and I am going to just bring that out and then round the edge is where I'm going to have the white. So I can just move that in. And that gives that kind of contrast going on there. I think that possibly works, I'm not sure. Here I'm going to put the charcoal where these kind of overlap. Like so. Let's see how that works here. This one will come up. So we've got some highlights there and again I'm going to put some highlight here, here and there. I'll just buff that in because it will tone down those brown lines that little bit as well which will help with that. So we've got that going on. The Senna is going to be fabulous um, although I am not so sure about all of this. I want shadow where there are lots of lines coming out together, that's for sure, because that's where there's a lot of ink. So let me just smudge all of this out. I'm using less and less of this charcoal as I go, if you noticed, because I'm beginning to learn that less is more with this. Too much, everything gets smudged, like here. And it is really dark and it's sort of like works itself into the paper really well. So we've got some shadowy stuff going on here. Just use the paper towel just to buff that out a bit. I've got some lines going under here, under there. Got any there? No, so I just want to add these. Like so. Then it's the time for the white chalk, which is going to be not right to the edge, but sort of like where there would be a highlight. And I think that will help greatly. So that's, oh gosh, so I throw stuff everywhere. That works. Here, top and bottom. I'm 
and then the white down the centre. Again, I'll just blend that out that little bit just to give that highlight. And the only one left now, I've got two, I've got that one, oh, I'm cut that one there. This one, I'm going to put some shadow at the bottom corners here and perhaps a little bit underneath that line there and there. Other end, Angela. And the white can go right down the centre here. Because I think that will be the brightest part just there. Getting some white fading out. And then this one, same idea as the doodah, top and bottom. Perhaps a little bit on the edges. And let's have a look at blending this in. Moving out that little bit so we've got the shadow moving up so this will end up looking like it curves upwards. very last bit is just here and then we can have a look at this and see overall how it looks mucky it's my first impression until I look on the camera I think so let me just zoom out so we can see it in its entirety blimey there's some good um, sorry my um, thingy going <laughs> there's some really good um, sort of like illusion of volume going on here a lot of contrast um, that I'm really enjoying and I will bring that out in the other sections I'm so glad I chose to use the charcoal even though it's a lot darker than I ordinarily would this could do with a bit more I'm not quite a bit more highlight I think I may use a white gel pen to add dots there to bring it out and I'll do the same in other areas as well oh just looked outside it looks like it started to rain a bit Looks very damp. Anyway, so <laughs> I just caught my eye. I think, oh, what's going on? Um, so other bits to finish. Um, whether I finish it all, I don't know. But it certainly is um, an interesting idea. Whether you think it's got merit or not, I don't know. But I thought I'd share and experiment and have a go because it's the kind of thing that I need today just to help to calm and soothe myself. So I'm going to finish this one here. I'll leave a list of the, I was going to say ingredients I used, um, materials I've used, a link to the original video where I got this idea from. And I hope you'll give something like this a go and see where it takes you. And I think the biggest thing here is playing around with where you create the densest pattern if you like or the densest amount of ink in a pattern here and here and so on to create that illusion of space and then how you get how you shadow and highlight to bring that illusion out even more um the white white chalk hasn't worked enough for me really for that so no doubt i will go back and use that but um i need to get this video edited, sorted, upload. While it's uploading, I can have a bath and what have you and get myself sorted to go off to the funeral. So I shall see you again soon. Until then, take care, have fun and be creative. Bye bye for now. Bye.